You're watching K34QB, Vail, Colorado. Expect in the forecast 51 degrees around 8 a.m., a high of 74. Now we've got these west winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, and that's what's going to br bring that storm front right in over us that we're expecting to see over the course of the next couple of days. So as we take a look at Vail by the hour, sunny skies and then partly cloudy by 4 p.m. That high is going to take place between 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock and then mostly cloudy skies leading into tonight and that's when we're going to start to see that precipitation roll in as well. As we take a look at that I-70 corridor, the temperatures down in Denver are nice and warm. 90 degrees in Denver with a 20% chance of precipitation, 70 degrees in Vail, 74 in Avon and 70 in East. Eagle. So definitely out to the east of us, those temperatures are nice and warm. As we take a look at overnight tonight, temperatures cooling down yet again. 34 degrees is our overnight low, 40% chance of precipitation. That wind still blowing through, mellowing out just a little bit, 15 to 25 miles an hour. So if you do have a dog at home that's scared of the wind like I do, just be prepared for that. As we take a look ahead into the next five days, precipitation is definitely in our forecast. 80% on Friday, 70% on Saturday and then lightening up as we move forward into early next week 30% on Sunday 30% on Monday and then we'll see a break in it with mostly sunny skies by Tuesday those temperatures starting to cool down quite a bit so just be prepared because it's not going to be the weekend that we saw last weekend we want to thank Lamina Jewelers for bringing you this weather report this morning if you're looking for a great place to go shopping for some new jewelry or some fossils and minerals they're your one-stop shop for all you need and they're located right across from the Solaris ice skating rink we're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, Kevin and I are going to tell you about all the things taking place in our community. Good morning, Vail. Live life to the fullest and relax with Simply Massage. With the lowest prices in the Vail Valley, there is something for everyone. We offer Swedish deep tissue massages, neuromuscular, reflexology, and cupping. Treat yourself to aromatherapy with essential oils or CBD oils. We offer 60 or 90 minute packages. Go to simplymassage.com or call 970-748-1600 to book an appointment today. Love the Good Morning Vale jingle? We want to hear you sing it. Enter our Good Morning Vale Sing the Jingle contest sponsored by TV8 Vale and always Mountain Time. You could have a chance to win some fabulous prize packages and come perform your version live on Good Morning Vale to a panel of celebrity judges. For more information and all the contest rules, go to tv8vale.com. home in the Rockies has it all. Are you looking for exciting and nutritious recipes to cook at home? Watch Colorful Cooking with Tracy Miller on TV8 Vale. 
Tracy brings you the best in fresh and healthy foods for the active outdoor lifestyle. Stream online at TV8Vale.com or find us on Comcast Xfinity Channel 92. There's more for you on 92. Map Harvest, your local marketplace for fresh, locally produced products. Our indoor farmer's market is open seven days a week, featuring locally grown organic produce, prepared meals, honey from our nap nectar hive, furniture, cutting boards, and much more. We source and sell locally grown and produced products from the Vale and Roaring Fork Valleys. Visit us at our new location in Eagle Ranch, 717 Sylvan Lake Road, next door to Color Coffee Roasters. We're talking all things taking place in the community because the lineup of events is just getting so stacked right now. There's so many things for you to get out there and enjoy. And, oh, man, I didn't realize that next weekend is already a Memorial weekend. I, I can't believe how it snuck up on us. When I <laughs> said the date this morning when we opened the show, it's like, oh, my gosh, we are well into May and almost right. out of May. I'm actually going to be going. I've got to go and see my dad. He wants to go to the Indianapolis 500, so my brother and I are going to take him for that event coming up at the end of the month. So it's coming up too fast. It is coming up too fast, but if you're looking for something to do this weekend, starting tonight, there's some great performances up at the Villar Performing Arts Center brought to you by the Vale Valley Academy of Dance. And right now, you don't want to miss it because their shows are absolutely incredible. So they're going to do two recitals and then they're going to do two presentations of Cinderella so that you can go and you can just enjoy Cinderella. We saw them do the Nutcracker and it was fantastic. It was fantastic. We got a little preview of what they were doing a couple days on the show when they were here and talking to Gretchen and they got up and they gave us just a little demonstration on what that dance is going to look like. But those performers have been working so hard and the Vale Valley Academy of Dance is, they, they put on a great show. So make sure you get up there at the Villar Center, which is an amazing facility in itself. And I know the performers are excited about performing up there. Yeah, that's what they were saying is the most exciting factor for them is getting to perform at the Villar Performing Arts Center because with just over 530 seats, it's a beautiful venue. It's so intimate and the acoustics are great. So make sure that you go online, you buy your tickets for this because it's something great to do over the weekend and support the local children here who have grown up. Some of those ballerinas have been doing it since they were two years old. So you want to go, you want to support them, and you want to be part of that. And also, you just want to get out and... There's no better way to celebrate a snowy weekend <laughs> than going to the Vlar. That's right. I thought we were out of that and into spring, <laughs> but this is the time of year. Again, we get to relax a little bit before this, this schedule starts picking up, and, uh, but it's coming in hard and heavy. So you like to laugh. I like to laugh. Who doesn't <laughs> like to laugh? Laughter right. <laughs> is the best medicine. we got coming up the Vail Comedy Festival. Yes, and this is going to be a really fun festival to go participate in over Memorial Day weekend. So you can start your Memorial Day weekend up in Beaver Creek for blues, brews, and barbecues. And then you can make your way to Vail for the Vail Comedy Festival. You can pick the comedians that you want to see, and they've got some big names, whether it's coming from Netflix, HBO, CBS, NBC, whatever it is. There are some really funny people. That's right. May 27th through the 29th, they're going to base out of Bridge Street. Got to be 21 and over is yes. a big thing. They've got magician comics. They've got comic comics. But go look at the lineup because there's, a, there's something for everybody. I'm always so mind blown at the magicians that then it's just like I can't even participate in this because I'm just like, I need to know your secret. So then I'm like Googling the secrets of the magician and then I ruin it for myself so quickly. <laughs> but the curiosity gets the best of me. And another great event that uh, take pl takes place every Tuesday yes. is that Vail Whitewater Race Series. So row, row your boat, get out there. If it's kayak, stand up, paddleboard, two person raft, they set up the course there in Gore Creek, and it is a fun spectator sport. It is a fun spectator sport, and we want to thank the Vail Rec District for bringing this to life. And if you have not gone to see it yet, International Bridge is a great place as a spectator to go and watch. But this is so intense. The paddleboarders float down the river, go past the gate, basically, or the object that they have to come around. Then they have to paddle back up river against the current right there. And right at the bridge, there's that little wave that they can control. So they can yeah. make it more difficult or easier based on kind of the skill level of the person participating. And then you have to paddle upstream and around the little buoy. And then once you paddle around the buoy, you have to do it again when you go to the next mile marker it's that you're on on the river. Sounds like you got it down pat. You know the course, but they change it every week. They do. I am really 
like in awe of these athletes and especially the ones that are on stand up paddleboard. So I like to watch it to be like, if I even tried, I would have been in the water the moment I was supposed to stand up. I think you and B could do the stand up paddleboard. Listen, B's in B trouble right now, yeah. so we're not we're not going there. Mark your calendars because we're getting so close to GoPro Mountain Games, which is oh. another great spectator event where you can go to International Bridge. You can sit up there. You can enjoy all of the things that are taking place. And we're going to have some of the best kayakers in the world. The Jackson family comes every year. That's right, yeah. We've got some of the best climbers in the world. We've got fabulous bikers and some of the best most well-behaved dogs for dock dogs. Oh, and that is so much fun to watch. Again, it's something for pros and Joes and something especially for spectators when it comes to the dog events. Right, and we just had the countdown up on the screen. We are 19 days away from the kickoff of GoPro Mountain Games. So you do want to make sure that you mark your calendars because there is an extended version of the lineup this year and there's so much great live music that you have to buy your tickets to now because those concerts will sell out but it's so much fun to go and they've expanded it from lion's head yep. to Vail village to golden peak where the hangout is going to be which is a new feature this year so you just want to get out there and check it all out yeah and uh they're also over to mintern too they've got yes. things all across the valley so look at it plan your days it's a, like you said an extended event because they've added a lot of things elongated the event but the food the music it's a great signature event for Vail. you know speaking of this new competition that they're bringing in i know someone who's competing in it you do who is that oh i think it would be a you yeah the downhill <laughs> mountain bike dual slalom is going to be fun i can't wait to do that I can't wait to watch that because what an intense sport that is. And then, of course, something else we want to talk about is your favorite because they're amping things up at the amphitheater. Yep, Gerald Ford Amphitheater, <laughs> getting it going. Joe Russo is going to kick it off. You're going to see, look at the screen right now and watch the acts that are up there. It is going to be a inc an incredible summer. I, I just can't believe how they've got us. Amos Lee is going to be that's one of yep. your favorites. That is but, one of my favorites. But um, look at that schedule. And again, you've got to get your tickets now because these shows are going to sell out. I know they're close on a few of them already and talking to our friends over there at the amphitheater. But get your tickets now. Joe Russo's kicking it off. And then one of my favorites, Michael Fronte, the energy, the emotion, the power behind his music is going to be so much fun. It's just an incredible place to go, and whether you sit on the lawn or whether you sit in the bleachers right there, it's so nice to just be back in action and see concerts in the venues that we all know and love here. And so you can go to so many great websites for so much information. For information on Beaver Creek, go to beavercreek.com backslash events. For information on the Villar Performing Arts Center, go to villarpac.org. And then for information on Vail, go to discovervail.com. Now... We've been talking about things in the community. Now we're going to bring it a little bit closer to home and talk mm -hmm. about things taking place at our very own TV station because Friday is the last day to submit your entry for the Wacky Winter Reading. Yeah, it's coming to a close. It's been going on all winter, and we've been running the promotions on it with our favorite person here at the station, Max. Oh, Max, so, he's a gift. So um, we're closing out that, but make sure you take part of that because uh, it's the last day coming up on the 20th. So we're going to take a look at what Max has to say about this year's Wacky Winter Reading right now. Hello, I'm Max with the Wacky Winter Reading Program. And today we're here at the Avon Public Library. We're going to learn about how to get a library card and pick up some nice books to read. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. So what exactly is the process to get a library card? Do you have photo ID on you? I do. Oh, fantastic. That's all I need. Let's get you started. Thank you so much. All right. All righty. Here is your library card and a bag for your books and Welcome to the Avon Public Library. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Would you like to go find some books? Let's do it. All right. So I'm looking for some book recommendations. Ah, well, you're in the perfect section. This is the teen section of the Avon Public Library. And I was thinking, because of your expressed interest, Library of Souls might be 
up your alley. And then you also said that you were interested in Dungeons and Dragons and maybe starting up your own group. And we do have some nice reference guides to lead you on your way. What are the sections of the library? Ah, oh, they're divided up with teen children. And then we have our adult section, both fiction and non. And we also have a Spanish section. Would you like to go explore? Let's go. All right. So what section of the library are we in? We're in the children's section. So we have books for all ages here at the library. What programs does the library offer? We offer after school programs for little ones as well as teenagers. And then we also have a special program called Reading Buddies, which pairs high school students with first through third graders to work on reading skills. And I think this would be a great choice for your little buddy. Be perfect for the little buddy. I want to thank the Eagle Valley Library District for sponsoring as well as letting us look at their fine selection. Thanks for coming. We're happy to have you. We want to invite you all to the Wacky Winter Reading Program. All you have to do is read 10 books or 1,000 pages. For more information, go to our website, tvavail.com. When people think of world-class destinations, they're drawn to a place that provides opportunities for fine dining, shopping, superior lodging, exciting events, and unparalleled outdoor activities. Park City, Utah and Vail, Colorado are renowned destinations for travelers and extraordinary homes for residents. Feature your exceptional products and services in these two luxury communities. Advertise with Park City Television and TV8 Vail. Contact us today. Step on, take a look around, and take a listen. Relax to the rhythm of the train on the tracks. For the kids, and the kid in all of us, the Leadville, Colorado and Southern Railroad. Hi, my name is Tegan Davis with the Eagle Valley Library District, inviting you to get a library card at any of our branches, Avon, Eagle, or Gypsum Public Libraries. If you're a visitor, a full-time resident, or just here for work, you can get a library card just by stopping in and bringing your photo ID. With your library card, you can check out anything in our libraries as well as our online collection. For more information, please visit evld.org. In the heart of the Vale Village, on the corner of One Willow Bridge Road, across from Solaris, is Lamina Jewelry. We have one of the largest selections of designer, fine, and fashion jewelry in the Vale Valley. In addition to our unique and one-of-a-kind jewelry pieces, we have museum-quality fossils and minerals that you truly have to see to believe. We pride ourselves on our customer service and knowledge of your pieces. Come in as a customer, leave as a friend. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. A lot of times on the show, we talk about things that are going on in the community with events and activities, but there's also a lot that takes place in our economic district as far as employees, housing, also the events that bring visitors to the valley. In our Vale business report, we were able to sit down with Mia Villar and talk about some of the things that are impacting our local economy. Hello, I'm Brian Hall, and welcome to the Vail Business Report. Today on the Vail Business Report, we're going to continue our look back on the 2021 and 2022 ski season. We're going to look at some of the numbers reported by Vail, which look good, but that doesn't tell the whole story. It wasn't a piece of cake for local businesses. They were continually challenged by high expectations from guests and staffing issues all throughout the winter. We had an opportunity to talk to Mia Villar, the Economic Development Director for the Town of Vail to get her impression of how the winter went. How do you think business went in the Town of Vail, both for the town and for the small businesses? 
What's interesting is the mountain has reported that their numbers are relatively flat. And so what we've seen anecdotally is folks come to town, they don't necessarily even get on the mountain and they have a great time just hanging out in our beautiful villages. So it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon for sure. I don't think it'll last forever, but we're enjoying it while it's here. What do you think were some of the challenges that the businesses in Vail faced this past winter? Yeah, I think obviously staffing is, has been a huge challenge. And I think one of, the, one of the important pieces there is just that those who show up are the ones that really need to be thanked. And unfortunately, they were frequently the ones that got the ire of folks that weren't happy with the service. A lot of it's just helping inform the, the guests who's here about how it actually is every day. All right. Do you think there's more even going into next year, if we have the same challenges, that we could do to kind of qualify or better explain what the expectations will be? Right, I think that the, the, um, the guest has that expectation of veil, certainly. <clears throat> but they're experiencing this all around the country in any destinations that really have the same kind of visitation that we're experiencing. And so it's really a matter of, um, you know, we're providing tools to the lodging partners to ensure that they're communicating with the guests long before they arrive. For example, be sure to make your, your reservations for dinner because if you get here and you try to make them when you get here, there's going to be problems with that, right? And so we have a whole um, page on the website that's really dedicated just to that. And then we provide that to the lodging partners to communicate with the guests so that they, uh, their expectations are set and they know that they need to plan in advance. Staffing was a big challenge this winter. Uh, for the town and for the community in general and small businesses. What were some of the things that the town and local businesses did to meet that challenge? Right, you know, one of, one of the ways that people are, uh, you know, kind of coping with it right now is just by closing a day a week. And, and actually, I don't think that's the end of the world. I think it's a very reasonable management technique that then usually balances that out between the different times of the day, the times of the, of the week that folks are visiting, and people still have a lot of options. I think it's interesting that Vail's pretty quiet right now because I think there's been a certain level of burnout and people are tired. So they need the ability to recharge and get away and so um, the, the community being relatively closed at this time of year, it's not ideal, but I understand it from a kind of historical perspective. Mia, what do you think the town of Vail needs to do and small businesses in Vail to be successful in the future? You know, I think um, obviously addressing the, the workforce challenges right now is huge. The housing component, the child care component. Um, hopefully we're going to get a, a, um, more response from the national level for J-1 and H-2B visas because we need more of those foreign workers. They've always helped us run the economy here on a seasonal basis, and I think getting that fixed would be, would be huge. And then continuing to just work together to adjust these challenges. Vail can't solve them, and neither can any of the individual communities, but together we can work to, to actually address these things more globally. What are some of the things that you do on behalf of the town of Vail to get the word out to people who would like to come visit here? Mm -hmm. You know, we um, just launched a brand new uh, campaign, which is called Life is But a Dream. And it really is playing on the data that we have about our guests and the fact that obviously COVID kind of nurtured that kind of dreamy kind of, I want to get away and I want to do something different and new and, and try to appeal to that. And I think we, um, our efforts themselves are really focused on the destination guest because the destination guest who comes from further away generally stays longer. They spend more and they actually are a little bit more committed to some of our community values around ensuring that we're taking, taking care of our natural resources and taking care of our trails and such. And so that's a new kind of drumbeat with the town is our destination stewardship plan, which is called Steward Vale, which is about not only attracting folks to visit our destination, but ensuring that the community and those guests are actually, you know, in balance, that we can provide those amenities, but at the same time, carefully make sure that we're taking care of those as well. Mia, tell me a little bit more about the stewardship program in Vale. You know, I just think it's really important that everyone knows that we're committed to taking care of this destination, of this community. And so we have the Steward Vale plan. And if you want to know more information about how we're doing that, go to engagevale.com and sign up for our regular communications and for a, an engagement session where we can get your feedback and help us kind of formulate and, and shape how, how our future looks here in Vale. Mia, I want to thank you for coming on the Vale Business Report. Um, it's great to get you to come on here and share kind of the behind the scenes efforts that you as the town, the community, and also the small businesses do to help make the town successful during the winter. Thank you. As Mia discussed in her interview with us, business in Vail was up. Let's take a look at some of those numbers reported by the town of Vail. The town of Vail sales tax returns reported were January 2022, $5,260,088. dollars 
That's up 53.7% over January of 2021. It's also up 23.3% over the Town of Vail's amended budget. The Town of Vail Real Estate Transfer Tax Report shows collections through February 21st of 2022 of $667,784. That is down 3.4% from this time in 2021. The 2022 annual REIT budget totals $7.5 million, and that is down 40% from the 2021 actual collections. The Town of Vale Hotel Occupancy Report shows November 2021 at 30%. That is up 5% over 2020. The December 2021 report shows 62%, and that's up 16% over 2020. January 2022 shows our occupancy rate at 65%, and that is up 15% over 2021. February 2022 shows an occupancy report of 77%, and that is up 16% over 2021. And March 2022 shows the rate at 72%, and that is up 6% from March of 2021. I've noticed some buds on the trees outside and some brave flowers sticking their heads up through the ground. So that must mean summer's coming to the valley. We had a chance to talk to Chris Romer with the Vail Valley Partnership about what he felt was going to carry over from our winter season into the summer, the trends and challenges that we need to keep an eye on. When we think about what summer looks like for our business community, we're going to see a continued trend of the things we saw this winter. The reservation, advanced booking reservations look very, very strong. Group and meeting business is back with a vengeance. There's a lot of pent up demand. The group pipeline is as high as it's ever been in the 20 years I've been involved in the group sales business. We are going to have a lot of folks, events are back. People are excited to be out at, at music and Ford Amphitheater and in Beaver Creek and Avon and Eagle and Gypsum Days and all the different events that take place. I think we're going to see really popular events. We're going to see people really excited to be outside spending time with friends and family. And we're going to see an increase in visitation over what we've seen the past few years. And I think that's a new normal. Our, our destination, Eagle County and the Vail Valley and the Colorado Mountain Resort communities are a great place to be. And people want to be outside with that outdoor recreation opportunities and the special events that exist. And we're going to see an increased volume and we're, we're going to need to buckle up and take great care of our guests. We'd like to thank Mia Villar with the Town of Vail and Chris Roma with the Vail Valley Partnership for taking the time to come in and talk to us on this week's program. We'd also like to thank you for taking the time to watch us. We appreciate that. If you have questions or comments about our program or ideas or subjects you would like to see us cover, please send your comments to comments at tv8vail.com. I'm Brian Hall, and thank you for watching this week's Vail Business Report. Good morning, Vail! Hi, I'm Danielle Turner, the Vice President and General Manager of TV8 Vail. And I'm Maddie Evans, host of Good Morning Vail. We want to thank the Vail Valley for welcoming us back into their homes. We're committed to bringing you the content you love produced locally right here in our valley. That's why we hope you stay tuned all summer long as we bring you expanded editions of Good Morning Vale, Flashback on Vale Valley, The Rise, the TV8 Visitors Bureau, and brand new episodes of Colorful Cooking. And a big thank you to the advertisers who have supported us along the way. If you'd like to join us on our journey, check us out at tv8vale.com, across all of our social media platforms, or on Comcast Xfinity Channel 92. There's more for you on 92. Each week on The Tech Show, you can look forward to the latest in technology and how you can use it too. We'll also chat with leading experts and you'll find out if the latest gadget will take my money or not. Don't miss The Tech Show. Tech your local listings.
Eyepieces of Veil has been a fixture in the Veil community for over 30 years. From designer frames and sunglasses to high-performance sports frames, prescription goggles and in-demand accessories like helmets, goggle lenses, and foldable reading glasses, our inventory raises the optical bar. Visit one of our seven locations today and see why generations of loyal customers return time after time for our unmatched service and inventory. Eyepieces, the art of vision. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. Let's take a look at this local weather. Today's weather is sponsored by Sun and Ski Sports. If you need anything for outdoor activities, stand up paddle boards, hiking, biking, they've got it all at Sun and Ski Sports. Today's local weather waking up today 51 degrees, a high today of 74 degrees. Going to be an absolutely beautiful day, but one thing to be careful of is these winds out of the west at 20 to 30 miles an hour. Now, we've seen a lot of the gusting come on, especially last week. So make sure if you're today is trash day, you've got everything buttoned up so you don't have to look for those trash cans when you get home from work today. Looking at Vail by the hour, we're gonna see those higher temperatures at 74 degrees around 4 p.m. That's when those clouds are gonna roll in and some of those gusts are really going to pick up. Now at that I-70 corridor, what a beautiful day in Denver today, 90 degrees. 70 degrees in Vail, 74 in Avon, and 70 degrees in Eagle. Now tonight, gonna low 38 degrees, 40% chance of uh, rain coming in, possibly, but again, those winds, 15 to 25 miles an hour. So just be mindful of that as you get out there today. Looking at the five day, looks like a change is a brewing. We've got Friday with 54 degrees, those temperatures coming down Saturday, Again, some more rain, 70% chance on Saturday, 49 degrees. Those lows are 24 degrees and 34 degrees on Sunday. Monday, cloudy 56 degrees, and then Tuesday, mostly sunny and 61 degrees. Now, we've got some things to look at. We're going to jump over to Maddie real quick and talk about what's going on next. Thank you, Kevin. We're really excited about a contest that we're running here at TV8. Do you like to sing? Well, we want to hear you do it. And not only do we want to hear you sing just anything, we want to hear you sing the Good Morning Vale theme song. So we want to hear you sing our jingle. The Sing the Jingle contest is taking place right now. You can go to our website for all the information. First place prize is $500 cash. Second place is $250. Third place is a $50 gift certificate. And all you have to do is submit your version of the Good Morning Veil vale jingle to us here at TV8. You can email it to danielle at tv8veil.com. For more information, you can always check out our website for all the rules and regulations. We've got the lyrics posted there. We've got the instrumental version posted there. And we really want to hear your version, whether you want to do it in acoustic, whether you want to do it in bluegrass, whether you want to do it in rock and roll. We want to hear it. So submit yours now because it's going to be a really fun contest. The top five people are going to come on to Good Morning Vale, perform their version live, and we've got three judges, myself, Gretchen Plesha, and Eric Williams, and if you have been in this valley for any amount of time, then you know those names because we absolutely love Gretchen and Eric here, so make sure that you participate because it could be the easiest $500 you ever win. We're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, we've got more Good Morning Vale. Here at Sun and Ski Sports, we are all about helping you find the right gear for your best adventure. Come explore our selection of skis, snowboards, bikes, clothing, and footwear. Stop by our full service shop to learn more about how we help keep your equipment at peak performance and our assortment of rentals. Remember, whatever your adventures may be, you can find all your gear here at Sun and Ski Sports. Call or visit us in Avon or Dillon or learn more at sunandski.com.
Although we're all excited for summer to be here, we can't forget about how incredible our winter season was, and especially as we've got an a winter athlete coming in to talk with us in just a minute. So we're going to take a look back at some of the highlights that we had this winter and reintroduce you to McCoy Park, one of the newest features up on Beaver Creek Mountain. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited because this is such a special segment and we've got Rachel Levitsky from Beaver Creek to join us and take us on a nice little tour around McCoy Park. Absolutely. I am so glad to be bringing you up to McCoy Park today. 250 acres of new natural terrain. It is beautiful out there. I can't wait to experience it with you. And we're on McCoy Park Express right now, making our way up. The sun is out. We're kind of seeing a just crazy amount of weather conditions out here today. A little bit of everything in weather <laughs> and in terrain. You got it all. <laughs> Which is the perfect combination to it get out is. and enjoy the mountains because then you really get to experience everything they have to offer. You sure do. So we're up here on McCoy Park Express now. Accessing McCoy Park is through Larkspur Express, Strawberry Park Express or Upper, Upper Beaver Creek Mountain Express got a mouthful of different <laughs> opportunities for you to come up and access McCoy Park. Which is incredible and so fun for everyone to come up here and at the top, Candy Cabin. Oof, Candy Cabin. The <laughs> Swedish fish. The chocolate covered Swedish fish. I am a big fan. I think that maybe on the way out we'll have to stop and check out the Candy Cabin and just take a little peep inside. It could be a reward for experiencing McCoy Park. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, double the rewards here. Getting to go on all the diverse train, just looking out ahead of us, there's so many options for all the littles and those adults that are just learning to ski, which is super fun. Absolutely. We've got 14 greens and three blue new trails out here in McCoy Park. And then there's a little bit of everything in between, too. It's a serene bowl environment, so you can go in between trails a little bit. Find some powder stashes. There's something for everyone. You get to choose your own adventure. So fun. Well, Rachel, I think that maybe we should stop talking, enjoy our chairlift ride, and then hit the snow. I think that's a great call. Beautiful <laughs> snowfall the past few days. We have some awesome powder in here. We've got some great groomers in here. Come out and enjoy it for yourself. All right, I think that we're going to go, and we're going to take our chairlift ride nice and easy, and then we're going to enjoy what McCoy Park has to offer. Let's do it. So pretty up so here. So pretty, and you can usually see the floor too. It's gorgeous. Yeah, how incredible. <sighs> I can see this why this is your favorite. We've made our way to the top of one of the lifts here in McCoy Park, and Rachel, we're in such a beautiful spot right now. We are. We're on the back deck of Eaton House right now, which just conjures up this serene and beautiful feeling. It's perfect right now on a cold and sunny day. It's perfect on a snowy day. You've got an inside warming room, and I can't wait for spring skiing back here. I mean, the views from back here are so breathtaking, and then you said we had panoramic panoramic views earlier and you meant it because what's behind is so mesmerizing and the trees covered in all this fresh snow it's like a breath of fresh air it truly is it makes you take a deep breath it makes you think about how beautiful this area we are is you know i love just spending time here i think i might move my office out here uh, me too <laughs> let's I'm, do it i'm gonna second that motion they've got wi-fi <laughs> perfect <laughs> And inside, there's a really cool mural that really brings to life exactly what you guys have done with McCoy Park in such a way that it's educational, mm -hmm. but also it's inspiring. It is. We worked with the U.S. Forest Service, the White River National Forest, to create this mural inside Eden House. It's, um, it's a QR code that you can scan and learn all about the habitats that McCoy Park provides. McCoy Park is a wildlife sanctuary in the summer, so it is closed in the summer for elk calving specifically, but it's home to so many different types of animals and creatures. We're so lucky to have it and we hope you come learn more. 
it is so incredible in the Rockies in the summer. And so I would imagine that this area is breathtaking and the wildlife lives their best life, luckily, in this sanctuary that they get. And how incredible of Beaver Creek to pull all of that together. Yeah, absolutely. They do live their best life. And so do we. <laughs> and so do we. I know, look at this view behind us. Our office today is terrible. I know, right? <laughs> oh. Can't complain at all. <laughs> Can't complain at all. I think we should go inside, warm up a little bit, and then take a couple more runs. What Let's do, you think? do it. Love it. Rachel, thank you so much for all of the fun and showing us everything McCoy Park has to offer. You weren't kidding. There's something for everyone out here. There really is. Come choose your own adventure out here. And thanks for spending the time with me. I love getting out here and I hope you all come and join us too. I think that maybe we should sneak a couple more laps in without <laughs> anyone knowing because the snow is so good and it's in such a beautiful area. Make sure you come up to Beaver Creek and you enjoy all of the diverse terrain that it has to offer and especially up here in McCoy Pike because it's the newest expansion and it's incredible. Regardless of the season, TVA is here for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Stop by for Good Morning Vale at 7 a.m. and stay for Colorful Cooking with Tracy Miller. We're bringing you lifestyle and news with Daily Flash, The Tech Show, Jet Set, and more. And you're sure to find the adventure you crave during our afternoon sports block from 4 to 7 p.m. daily. Find us every day, all day on Comcast Xfinity Channel 92 or streaming live at TV8Vale.com. There's more for you on 92. Follow your favorite extreme sports athletes with the Telly Award winning show, The Line. If you're an adrenaline junkie and need a daily dose of base jumping, skydiving, highlining, biking, kayaking, and more, then look no further. We've got you covered. Catch JT Holmes, Andy Lewis, Cam Zink, and many more extreme sport athletes here on The Line. Check your local listings for more information. Evans. And I'm Kevin Shields, host of Good Morning Vale. TVA is kicking into high gear this summer, launching some exciting new programming like Flashback on Vale Valley, a nostalgic show taking a look at some old TV8 segments. We're also launching The Rise, a look behind the scenes with local and touring dance. And don't forget to submit an entry to our Good Morning Vale Sing the Jingle contest. No matter the season, we're here for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember, you can always catch us on Comcast Xfinity Channel 92. There's more for you on Channel 92. Hi, I'm Lori Barnes, Director of Vail Public Library, and I invite you to join us here at our library to find materials in multiple formats, fiction, nonfiction, children's, periodicals. There's a plethora of materials here for you. The way you get that is through your library card. If you are visiting, living, working in the Vail Valley, you are welcome to have a library card. Simply come in with your photo ID and we will serve you and allow us to transform you at Vail Public Library. Good morning, Vail! For those of you who don't know, Vail produces some of the most incredible athletes and we've got one of us, one of them joining us on the couch first thing this morning, Thomas Walsh, who just won a silver medal, the Paralympics, and now he's going to give us some information on what he does in the summer because he has to stay in shape. Thomas, thank you for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. Oh man, you have been on the go. Constantly moving, constantly <laughs> training, constantly, uh, you know. Touring, touring the country. I had the privilege to go see the president at the White House with Team USA. I just saw that on your social media. It was, which is a wonderfully awesome experience. Um, not only is it humbling to represent you know, our country, but also to experience those moments that are truly once in a lifetime. Truly once in a lifetime. And I mean, the pictures, the videos, all of it that came out of that from you were so incredible. And you looked so happy, like you were just in your element thriving. I loved it. I really, I really felt blessed to be a part of that group and this community that I'm in. 
it's not every day that, that one gets to go to the White House or even meet athletes from other sports. I'm a winter sport athlete, so I know some snowboarders, some Nordic skiers in and, and that little world, but getting to meet athletes who are swimmers and runners and, and various other things that you might have never even heard of is, is really great. It is really cool, and it's really cool how it all comes together and just that community of representing Team USA and really showing what we're all about. And so it is cool that you got to do that. And then right after that, you were on the go again to do some more on-snow training, mm -hmm. and you just got home from it. Absolutely. I uh, actually was just returning from Mammoth, California, where it's still snowing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was a little cold, a little windy, but it was good to get back on the snow. And, and people always ask, why are you back on snow so quick? It right. feels like the Paralympics just ended in March. So, what, a year, two months even? Um, but my sport's a never-ending journey and have to constantly refine those skills. And so kind of taking this time to deconstruct my skills on snow and almost relearn how to ski. Uh, you know, go back to the beginner chair. I spent about six days cycling the beginner chair at Mammoth Mountain. And that is painful. It is long. And for someone like me who knows how to get out there and enjoy the mountains and all the steep terrain, having to take that patience, take a deep breath and look, hey, I got four years till my next big competition. I'm going to take the time now to, to improve it for that. Right, and when you deconstruct it, you're talking everything from edge angle articulation with your coaches who literally are watching the ways you, your knees are moving. So you literally go from being at the Paralympics to being at ground zero. Absolutely. Uh, we, we learned everything from the basics, learning how to do a wedge turn, a parallel turn, some of these things that people learn you know, when they're just starting to ski. And it really is humbling and eye-opening for me to go back to those true roots to really try and figure out, okay, Thomas, how can I make my skills better by, by, by starting at the very beginning and kind of working out those little fine kinks that we need? Do you think that when you are ski instructing and you are helping people kind of learn these skills themselves, it puts you in that mindset of just constantly taking yourself back to that step one, and especially when you're in the midst of your competing season. Absolutely. I think as any expert in their craft, you know, it takes so many hours to learn, but you also need to come back to, to the things that start, start you off. And so when I'm teaching and doing these drills with basic, you know, beginners, that's helping me refine my own skills on the course. And so when I come to these camps where my coaches are scrutinizing every little millimeter of if my skis are moving or my knees or ankles or whatever it is, that has given me a little bit of practice. It definitely yeah. has, and I feel like it makes you such a good ski instructor, but also you're the most humble ski instructor on the mountain, and I say this every time we see each other because <laughs> people don't know who they're skiing with until, like, after they're done skiing with Thomas, which is always really impressive. And so you just got your summer training. How intense is your training this summer? The summer will be interesting. Um, it is the first year of a quad, so we're looking four years ahead. And yes. to someone who, who's not involved in the sport, it might seem like a long ways away but it's gonna come at me really quick. These yes. past four years went so quick, I know these next ones are gonna come. So the summertime is gonna be involved with a lot of dryland training, cross training. I work out at the Westin here in Avon and they have a wonderful gym facility, so I like to do that. And then I get outside of my mountain bike on Beaver Creek or Vail Mountains. I like to paddleboard, really just trying to stay active. So uh, gonna work on some cardio things, climb up the Berry Picker Hill Climb every now and then, and, and we'll see how the summer goes. Uh, unfortunately, one of my camps was unfortunately canceled, but. We'll keep it going. I'll get back on snow in Europe sometime in, in the fall. So you've got kind of a break from some snow for a while now, which, I mean, has to feel a little bit nice just for your mental health because when you do something so repetitively and so constantly, sometimes it can get draining. And so when you're doing all of this, how do you stay mentally focused and motivated to keep pushing forward for this what seems like forever yeah. to, to anyone who's like four years from now, that's a ways away. But for you, you're like, wow, that's going to be here quickly. Exactly. I think I have a lot of relief when it comes this time of year. I get to go out <laughs> on the golf course as well. Uh, being a ski racer, you're sitting on the chairlift and I'm just always cold. <laughs> it, it gets in your bones. I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> it gets inside your body and you stay perpetually cold. And now I get to wear shorts. I get to go to the golf course, enjoy some of the sunshine we have. Uh, so that keeps me happy and always trying to continue to look ahead and know what I want to do and have those goals set for myself and know that the time that I put in now at the gym and uh, working out or staying active is what's going to help me come later in the season and make sure that I'm, I'm ready for the challenges ahead. And so we've talked a few times, you and I. We've sat on this couch, caught up just a few times. <laughs> I'm going to say just a few. And when you were a young child growing up here, what was the thing that motivated you the most to get on snow and be a competitive athlete? I think I was just so hyperactive. 
<laughs> I was involved in various things from Nordic to Alpine to doing a lot of kind of arts events around here. So I really wanted to dip my fingers into everything and I just couldn't stop moving. Uh, that's really what it was. And, and I think athletics and various sports were a way for me uh, to not only annoy my mom and my family all the time, <laughs> but also utilize that energy in a constructive and you know, productive way. Which is really cool to see the progress that you've made throughout your career because everyone who has grown up in the Valley, like you and I have known each other for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to have watched your story and your journey start where you did with ski racing and to where you are right now because you're an incredible athlete and how cool is it that you're sitting here in Vail, Colorado, your hometown, with us talking about your career. It, it is very surprising. Uh, I Full feel, circle. I feel blessed. I feel blessed. We have a, we have a bunch of good athletes from yes. this valley. And yes, we do. like you said, it's a pretty small community. And so we've known each other a while. And, and being a part of that athletic community and seeing some of my friends and fellow athletes also push, push ourselves and each other, uh, it really elevates the whole experience. And um, it makes me happy to be a part of it. I mean, you're such a great role model for the kids in our community who are looking to maybe get into ski racing because it is such a, I mean, u universal program that we have here mm. is the best way to put it because whether you want to do Devo or whether you want to run the gates up in Beaver Creek or in Vail Mountain and you just want to put your toes in the water of ski racing, we've got so many great opportunities and it's so cool to see athletes athletes like yourself come so far. Thank you. And, and uh, I... I always make the joke that if I had to choose ski racing, I probably wouldn't choose it because it's so expensive. <laughs> but I love the mountains and I love what I do. And, and being able to see some younger athletes um, on the mountain is always a blessing. I rode Chair 11 a couple weeks before closing and I, I ran, ran into some, some ski club kids and we started chatting. And uh, being able to look at, at their lives and, and through my eyes and knowing that I was once that kid on the chairlift looking at the older kids and looking at the older athletes and, and idolizing them. Uh, it, it makes me want to give back more and, and simply be a part of that. I think that you do such a good job immersing yourself in our community to help inspire these young athletes that are just up and coming in their careers. And so you get some downtime, you get to paddleboard, you get to get out on the golf course, and you just get to focus on your dry land training for right now before you get back on the snow. Yep, it's going to come quick. It's going to come quick, like I said. I guess we have snow coming in this week. I'm a little scared of that. I was happy to take the... Uh, the snow clothes away for a bit, but um, it'll be great. It'll be great. So I'll be around. Well, so good to see you. And thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us and giving us all this great information. Congratulations on all of the accomplishments that you had in just the last six months. You've been on fire. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you for coming in. Make sure that you follow him on social media. That way you can see exactly what he's up to from meeting the president to going to camps in Mammoth. He's doing it all and he's back in our community for just a little bit. So if you see him out and about, make sure that you say hi because he's a great part of our community. We're going to take a short break. When we come back from the break, we've got just a little Good Morning Vale left. Welcome aboard! Bobby Laurie and Nikki Noya have your ticket to everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Grab your boarding pass. It's time to jet set. I'm Blake O'Rulian. And I'm Brigham Harris. Are you looking for high school and local sports recreational coverage? We've got you covered on the scoreboard. 
Tune in Tuesdays and Fridays at 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. You can find it all on Park City TV, TV8 Vale, or at thescoreboardnation.com. We'll see you there. Learn the latest in science each week and how it relates to everyday life. From space exploration to plant biology to the latest in high-tech advances. Every new scientific development is explored and explained in an understandable way. Amazing stories each week. Watch Science Now. These hours always fly by, and I swear every time I talk to Thomas, I'm always just in such awe of the athlete that he is here in our community. Yeah, he is a true inspiration, wonderful athlete, and just a good community member. And he's really, really humble, which is always something that I'm so inspired by because he does. He, go out, he goes out, and he's a ski instructor during the winter, and he takes little kids, and they don't know that they're sitting on the chairlift with a silver medalist as he's <laughs> teaching them how to ski. Yeah, he, he's definitely very humble, but also, you know, he's involved in the community. He's obviously traveling around, getting a lot of neat exposure following his silver, silver medal win. So, um, you know, best to him to preparing for the next, in the next four years, competing again. Right. Yeah. And all of the athletes that we have here in our community are absolutely incredible. What a good show we've had. Thank all of you for tuning in and watching this episode of Good Morning Vale. We can't wait to do it again for you tomorrow. We'll be live from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And, oh, man, there's so many things taking place in the community for people to get out there and enjoy right now. Get your tickets for the amphitheater. They're going to sell out. And don't forget about that Cinderella performance up at the Villar Performing Arts Center. It's going to be a great weekend to get out there and soak up the last little bit of snowfall. <laughs> Fingers crossed that we're going to have this is spring, but hopefully we'll start to see that sunshine come back out in full force here shortly. Get out there today. Enjoy that sunshine. Watch out for that wind chill, but it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day, and plan accordingly on that weekend with that precipitation moving in. Get out there and have a great Thursday, everyone. Good morning. Love the Good Morning Vale jingle. We want to hear you sing it. Enter our Good Morning Vale Sing the Jingle contest sponsored by TV8 Vale and always Mountain Time. You could have a chance to win some fabulous prize packages and come perform your version live on Good Morning Vale to a panel of celebrity judges. For more information and all the contest rules, go to TV8Vale.com. home in the Rockies has it all. I'm Maddie Evans. I'm Blake O'Rulian. And I'm Brigham Harris. Do you love the outdoor lifestyle? Well, then we've got you covered in four great mountain towns, Park City, Utah, Vail, Colorado, Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and Reno, Tahoe. You can tune into Park City TV, TV8 Vail, or at thescoreboardnation.com. We'll see you there every day at 6.30 p.m. Eyepieces of Vail has been a fixture in the Vail community for over 30 years. From designer frames and sunglasses to high-performance sports frames, prescription goggles and in-demand accessories like helmets, goggle lenses, and foldable reading glasses, our inventory raises the optical bar. Visit one of our seven locations today and see why generations of loyal customers return time after time for our unmatched service and inventory. Eyepieces, the art of vision. Hi, my name is Tegan Davis with the Eagle Valley Library District, inviting you to get a library card at any of our branches, Avon, Eagle, or Gibson Public Libraries. If you're a visitor, a full-time resident, or just here for work, you can get a library card just by stopping in and bringing your photo ID. With your library card, you can check out anything in our libraries as well as our online collection. For more information, please visit evld.org. You're watching K34QB, Vail, Colorado. Hi, 
I'm Tracy Miller with Colorful Cooking and today we are going to be cooking up some real goodies. Whether you have people visiting or you're going on a picnic or you just want something really healthy for dinner tonight, I've got you covered right here. My name is Tracy and I've been cooking in the valley for a long time. My business is called Colorful Cooking and I like to add fruits and vegetables to everything. We want to eat healthy, we want to get some good substance, and we want to get out there and enjoy the high country here in the Vale Valley. So today, I am going to start off with one of my newest recipes, and I actually love this recipe. It's good for all the vegetarians out there, so if you have people visiting and you kind of need to uh, adjust the menu a little, this could be a good one. It's an asparagus wrap, and it's with a chipotle sauce and cheese. Then we are going to make a Brussels sprout salad and I don't know a lot of people like in Brussels sprouts right now but a lot of the different generations have mixed feelings about Brussels sprouts and they don't like them so I'm going to tell you how to cook them perfectly so that everybody will like them we're gonna pair the Brussels sprouts with pears and thyme and put them in a honey mustard sauce. So it's really a nice salad. It's hearty and it's one that you can make and then put it in your fridge. So if you do have guests or if you do want to eat it tomorrow, it's still going to be good. And last but not least, we are going to make crab cakes. And I'll tell you what, I think everybody pretty much loves a crab cake. So we've got asparagus wraps, Brussels sprout salad, and crab cakes that we're making on the show today. And we're not wasting any time. We're jumping right on into it. So so at first we're going to do the asparagus wraps. Now I've already boiled the asparagus and I got some skinny ones today. I think everybody has a different preference. You like the skinny or the fatties, but we've got some skinny ones today. I have boiled them and then I shocked them. So that means you boil them in water until they're done. And these were skinny ones. They took like maybe three minutes in boiling water. And then I put them in cold water. That stops the cooking process and keeps the nice vibrant color green. So we're making wraps, super easy. And one of the things when you're making wraps that you wanna do is microwave your wraps for like 30 seconds because that's gonna make them a little bit easier to roll and a little bit easier to work with. So I've got three wraps in here that I microwaved for about 30 seconds. They are flour tortillas, delicious and hearty. And those are gonna be the base for our asparagus wraps. But first what we need is our sauce and now every sauce really makes a difference when you're making a sandwich or a wrap or dinner or a salad whatever you're making the sauce is really important so today we are going to make it's kind of like a play on russian dressing but with chipotle and if you don't know what chipotle is chipotles are jalapenos that have been dried and smoked so they've got a good kick to them but they also have a real smoky flavor so if you like the smoky flavor this wrap is going to be for you because i have a smoked gouda as well well, should have opened that before the show. 